Here at True Bethel, our ministries are in the community and reaching people where they are. Volunteers serve the hungry at the food pantry. I'm supposed to be here. Provide clothes to those in need at the clothing pantry. I'm supposed to be here. Preparing our ministries to go on the road. I'm supposed to be here. This is Chubeto. You are welcome here. Here at True Bethel, our ministries are in the community and reaching people where they are. Volunteers serve the hungry at the food pantry. I'm supposed to be here. Provide clothes to those in need at the clothing pantry. I'm supposed to be here. Preparing our ministries to go on the road. I'm supposed to be here. This is True Bethel. You are welcome here.
It is another Thursday night. We are live and in living color. The way you know we're live tonight is if you're in Buffalo and you look outside and there's snow on the grass, we're live. Hey, go ahead, those of you who are on all our social media, so glad to see Stanley again with us tonight and Mona. Uh, oh, I mean, they're coming in. Patricia is praying right now. Uh, Kalima uh, Halim is on. Welcome. And uh, Betty Jean uh, is on. And so many of you are on. Listen, what I need you to do, all of you who are in the virtual church, I need you to share, share. And those of you who are on our YouTube, that YouTube audience is increasing every single time we come on. I'm going to need you to hit that button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And those of you on Facebook, if you ever go over to YouTube, listen, go over and subscribe to the True Bethel YouTube channel. It is so important. That way, when you subscribe, you can even uh, hear a little bell when we go on live and you never will miss us on Thursday or on Sunday or if we have an important announcement to make. If there is an emergency, we can go live and it will ding you like ding and then you will know we're on live and you don't have to wait for anybody to call you. You just make sure you tell it you want to be notified when we're on live. So welcome uh, today to all of you. Want to do some housekeeping before we get into this exciting study. And those of you on Facebook, go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. We're on live at the right on the bottom. It says share. Uh, it's a little weird because watch party is gone. So you don't even have to comment. You can just share. And then your friends who are notified when you come on, then they will be able to then look and join us here. Yeah, the number you all are coming on in tonight. And listen at any time, because now True Bethel does not just have a church at 907 East Ferry. We do not just have a church now on Swan Street in downtown Buffalo. We do not just have a church now in Niagara Falls. We now have virtual church, and I'm seeing the virtual members. Oh, yes. And for those of you who are full members, starting next week, if you want to come on a Sunday, members will call in on Tuesday and then Everybody else can call in on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday if there is room because we are being inundated with calls. That's a good problem to have. Let me, let me tell you, I am so excited that people want to come to church. I am so excited that they want to come to church. So Tuesday's call in will be reserved for members of True Bethel so that they can call in and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, will be open uh, to the rest of our brothers and our sisters uh, who want to come to the service of the Lord. Well, I've got to get started. Are you all ready? Because when I tell you studying this Bible is exciting, like I am excited about studying this Bible. And I have not always in my life been excited as I am about studying the Bible. But the deeper I dig, the more I understand, it, it is as if my relationship with God becomes greater and greater and greater. So let me remind you what we talked about. Oh, I think I missed something, didn't I? If you want to join True Bethel Church at any time, you can do this. These things you can do. And to those of you who are on our conference call, these things you can do. You can, on our social media pages, you can go and you can put a message in of your name and your phone number and let us know you want to become a part of the True Bethel Church. Or you can go to our website and right there at the True Bethel website, you can, you can join True Bethel Church. TrueBethel.com, join um, right there. Or on your cell phone, you can go to 72,000. That's the number you have to dial in. 72,000 and put in the words, join us. 72,000 and the words, 
join us. Lord, speak tonight as we study this Bible. If you will remember last week, we left off with this scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. And let me just real quick, three minutes, go over for those of you who were not with us last week, what we discovered. Because many times when we read this scripture, we see it as if I follow God's plans, um, he's going to give me a good and it's not for disaster and future is for future and for hope. Right. And, and we know that we have heard that we have read that. And at the end of the day, we're going to look at today. We're going to look at today, whether this Old Testament scripture has any validation for application to our lives. Let me say it a different way. So it's not so wordy. Whether the Old Testament scripture where God is sending a message to the Israelites, does God still have plans for our lives as New Testament believers? And the reason I'm walking through this, because as I told you, there are times that people will take an Old Testament scripture, take it out of context, and then try to apply it to the New Testament church. So let's go over what we went over last time. Number one, when Jeremiah says what God says, it was not about an individual. Remember we said that. It wasn't about an individual. It was about a people, the called people, the people that he had chosen, that God chose to get people to him, the people God chose to get people to him. And so we learned another word about the, the people who he says this to, um, about plans for them is that they were exiled. Now exile means forced absence from one's own country. Y'all remember that forced absence from one's own country. So we know that they were exiled and now God is saying to them, you know, I want you to come home sooner or later. I'm going to bring you home. And I know the plans I have for you. You remember? Good. Number two, we learned last week that the people of Israel sinned against God by worshiping idols and not listening to the voice of God. We saw scripture. And tonight, what we are going to, we, what we are going to be looking at is some of these things. Does God still act and react this way? So we, we talked about you got to be careful who you worship. And then number three, we looked at God wanted Israel to be honest about their rebellion against him. And we're going to ask that question tonight. Does God still want us to be honest about our sins? So the way we're going to do this is we're using loosely what the type of study we're going to do this with is a topical Bible study. Now, let me explain to you what typical Bible study is. Um, the topical Bible study, according to Ari Tori, in how to study the Bible for its greatest profit, Bible students should take up various subjects one by one and search the Bible for what it says on these subjects. So we're going to take the subjects of the Old Testament and we're going to put them and see, is there any New Testament scripture? I told you, everything in the Old Testament does not pertain to a New Testament believer. Are you listening to me? Everything in the Old Testament does not pertain. So when you take an Old Testament scripture and you try to apply that to your life, you must ensure that there is scripture that is that will justify you as a New Testament believer or you as a Christian to do that which you have read or believed in the Old Testament. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Are you all ready to get to it? Let's look at the Old Testament of some of the topics that we talked about or that were there. Uh, the Old Testament, when you see OT in my notes, that means Old Testament. The Israelites listened and were influenced by false teachers. And this is the scripture. Let's see. Jeremiah 29 and 8. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies of God. I'm sorry. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says, do not let your prophets 
and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. That's Old Testament. Now, the question, if you're going to layer something from the Old Testament to your life is, do we still have false prophets and fortune tellers? Now, I know y'all know about fortune tellers. Some of y'all didn't know about fortune tellers. You, I, I, yeah, yeah, you know, you know about them. Put signs in the window. But these are not, see, you, when you think of fortune tellers, when, when people sometimes think of fortune tellers, they're thinking of the profession of where you go pay somebody. M most of that is entertainment. When the Bible talks about fortune tellers, it is talking about those who claimed to have a vision of the, of, of the future sent by basically God, right? So the question is, do we still have fortune tellers? Do we still have fake prophets, fake teachers? Old Testament I just read to you, the Jeremiah 29, 8. Let's look, because I found some stuff for you. I went digging for you. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 15. Am I going all right? Am I going too fast for you, Jay? Am I going too fast for you, Patricia? Y'all let me know. I know Elder Bobby was going to be here, and Janie Callahan and Betty Allen was going to be on. Good afternoon, good evening. Matthew 7 and 14. You ready for this? Beware of false prophets who come to you disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves, but are really vicious wolves. Uh oh, I, don't, I got my writers. I think, I think we lost a piece. You can identify them by their fruit. Thanks, Mark. That is by the way they act. You can pick can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Let me just go back to here. You can identify them by their fruit. You identify them by what they produce. It is not hard for you to identify, look at this, false prophets who are disguised. Because this is where you have to be careful. Notice in the Old Testament, it said, watch them fortune tellers, watch those false teachers. Now I can apply that that portion of the scripture in the Old Testament still applies. I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures. And the way you recognize them is by what they produce. Listen, nobody has to tell you an orange tree is an orange tree when it's producing. Now, you can go up to an orange tree and not know it's an orange tree unless you're a professional forester. But if you're not, and most of us are not, it isn't until it starts producing. And it isn't the small things it produces, it's when it starts to mature that which is producing. So don't get fooled by a false prophet or a false teacher when, when, when things, when you can't see it clearly, you will see it in time if what they are saying and what they are teaching, if they are teaching evil, if they're teaching up things that you know are not of God, you will be able to see it. Can you pick grapes? And, and it goes on. So let's go to 1 John. Got your Bible? Go to 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 1. 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 1. And we find these words. Dear friends, do not believe everyone, it's in the Bible, who claims to speak by the Spirit. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read that again because y'all getting happy. Yo, Facebook over here going, up. I see all kinds of blue hearts. Do not believe everyone who claims to speak to you by the spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. And if I remember, I'm going to deal with that one of these weeks because the question is, how do you test them? For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the spirit of God, right? And, and I'm not going to spend much time on this tonight, but also remember what you just read. You will know them by their fruits because the devil knows how to lie. 
if they really believe in Jesus Christ, there will be some fruits that are shown, including humility. Oh, I could preach that all day. You know, everybody knows that's one of my favorite subjects uh, to talk about. The verse goes on to say, but if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth of Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist. It didn't say that they are the Antichrist. It said it has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. Now, stay with me tonight because some false prophets and teachers will not chase after you. Some of them wait for you to chase after them. Oh, let me show you what I mean. Second Timothy four and three for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for entertainers. I'm sorry, teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. We've got to be careful because from the Old Testament, you see how you layer it? Old Testament, they're teaching about it angering God, it angering God, right? Next, about idols. They got the, the, the teaching of idols from false teachers. Let me help some of you right now. A false prophet doesn't need to be called a prophet. He could be called many other things or she. But if the teaching and the fruit is simply leading to things, oh, I'm trying to teach in here tonight, that you long for and that you start to worship or that you feel that this is the only evidence of the grace of God is my car because I went to a meeting one night and my heart wasn't right and the prophet told me I was gonna get a car and I got a car and I'm in love with this car. I want you to be clear of what the problem was in the Old Testament. Remember, they would make images of gold, of silver, of bronze. And they would hold those things up and worship them. The Old Testament, people of Israel sinned against God by worshiping idols and not listening to the voice of God. Are y'all with me tonight? Everybody with me? Yep, you with me. I see it. I see it. When you're with me, throw me up a make sure, yep, or a hard, or yep, yep, that's right. That's right, Christine. I'm going to read it again, because let's see if this is still true. The people of Israel sinned against God by worshiping idols and not listening to the voice of God. Let me prove to you where I got that from. This is from last week, Jeremiah 25 and 6. Do not provoke my anger. Do not provoke my anger, he says to them in the Old Testament. Worshiping idols you made with your own hands, then I will not harm you. Now, let's talk about some of the things that are made by the hands of man. Houses, cars, if you were from a different state, up here in in Western New York, we say cars, jewelry, clothes are all things, right? Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't take care of the things that God gives you or allows you to have. But when things become more important than God himself, it could be a form of idol worship. Not only that, and we'll see in the scriptures, they would carve um, statues, oh, that looked like people and then worship them. That's idol worship. But how many people out there that you know who claim to believe in God and will pay more attention to washing their car than cleansing their soul? How many people out there do you know 
that spend more time getting ready to show what they have in worship and not getting their mind ready and humbling themselves to be in the presence of God. We think the Old Testament is the only place people worshiped idols. How many people you know that if a person didn't have money, they would lose their mind? We spend a lot of time on things. And we must be careful, even in our churches, of simply preaching and teaching about things. Teaching and preaching about things. Are y'all with me tonight? All right. Let's look at what else he says. Jeremiah 35 and 15. Time and time again, I sent you prophets, prophets who told you, turn from your wicked ways, start doing things right, stop worshiping other gods, small g, small g, did, oh, did I move this or something? Oh, see, I can move it, huh? You didn't know I could move it. Now you know. Uh, by worshiping other, and can I write on this now? Uh, do this? Oh, see, uh -uh. we're doing a lot here that I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so let's go back to where we are. By worshiping other gods, all right? So this is so important that we get this. Because notice this God is small g. By worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land I've given you to your ancestors. But you would not listen to me or obey me. Now remember, so we don't get confused, he is talking to the children of Israel. He says, you have worshiped other gods. Now, let's go to Exodus 20, because we're staying, I'm, I'm going to keep you in, in this Old Testament for a minute. Uh, and then we're going to look at, does God still feel the same way about idols? Exodus 20, 20 and 1. Then God oh, gave me, we haven't used the board in a long time. <laughs> then, then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your, your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. So God is not acknowledging that there is another God because it is in a small g, which means it is not even a real being. Are y'all with me tonight? Verse number four, you must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. What did I just say? It says you must not make for yourself anything. You shouldn't be making any type of little carving that you putting on your dresser and rubbing it on your arthritis at night. No, 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 no. This is not right. You should not be taking, I told you that last week, any object from somebody who has passed and thinking that that object is going to heal you, is going to watch over you. No. When you, and the scripture about praying to the dead, I'm not going to deal with it tonight. I promise you, you can go and look it up. At the end of the day, you have to let those who have died rest. Your talking to be, should be to the God who created them. Are y'all with me tonight? I'm trying to teach somebody in this world. Um, you must not make any for yourself an idol, kind, or an image of anything in the heavens or in the earth. Stop, don't, do not. I'm not telling you to get rid of your jewelry. I'm telling you I probably wouldn't buy any more crosses with Jesus hanging on them, hanging it on my neck. Because that's not Jesus. And if you do, if you do, don't pray to that image. Are y'all listening to me? Do not pray to an image. I, I know growing up Methodists, they got rid of every cross in the church that had Jesus hanging on it. And I know we still have them in our churches, and I know you could probably discover it at, at the Niagara Falls location in some place hidden because it was an old Roman Catholic church, and they utilized that symbol. I'm only reading from this Bible, and the Bible tells me don't create that type of image. It says, do not create that type of image. As a matter of fact, let, let me say this. Even the cross on your neck, you shouldn't be praying, looking at that cross, unless it's just to be reminded 
Let, let me help you. Unless it's just to be reminded, like we have the crosses in our church, that's to keep us in our mind that he died for us. But when I pray, I am not praying to that, to that image, to that, to that, that uh, statue, to whatever is built. I'm praying unto him in spirit realm, not in earthly realm, not in flesh realm. And if you need something in the flesh to pray to God, you're going to be out there. Because there's going to be things you go through in your life. You ain't going to have no cross around your neck. You're not going to have that, that uh, the statue of Mary. Uh, you're not going to have it. And I'm in no way disrespecting anybody else's beliefs. I'm only sharing what I'm getting from this Bible. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins... I really probably should deal with this next week because I hear people saying this now and we need to discover if this is true right now as it was back then. I lay the sins of parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. Now, I promise you, if the Lord allows me to live, I will deal with that scripture because I think that's very important because I've heard it preached in the New Testament church, allegedly the New Testament church. So I want to deal with that. But notice how important this is. He says, but I lavish unfailing love for, th for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Again, remember who he's talking to. He's talking to Israel. So it's clear that in the Old Testament, this sin of idol worship, of building things um, that were images and of worshiping other gods, small g, is in the Old Testament. Let me show you what I found in the New Testament, because does this still pertain to today? Come on, grab your Bible, grab your Bible, go over to 1 John, not John. Because some people get to John and say, oh, it is the first John I found. <laughs> no, not, not the first John you found. <laughs> After you find that first John, then go to first John, all right? Go to first John, chapter number five, verse 21. First John, chapter number five, verse 21. This is from the, King, from the King James Version of the Bible, and then I'll share with you from the New Living Translation. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. All right. Stay in 1 John 5.21. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Whew. Some of you are in love, love, and that's a good thing. Love is a good thing. But never put anyone before God. Now, let me, let, me, let, me, let me qualify that statement. Because some of you will tell spouses and husbands and wives and significant others, you know, God, uh, God is first, so I'm going to church. That, 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 that's not necessarily God. <laughs> the God of your heart it will show again by your fruits. It'll show by how you act. It does not mean you neglect the ones you love. As a matter of fact, it's the total opposite. When you have the love of God in your heart, you treat people even better. Relationships are better because of who you are, not because of who you brag about you are and what you shouldn't do. And I'm with God now and everybody else going to hell and that, that. No, no. Jesus was about love. Jesus was about patience. Jesus was about ministry. Most important, Jesus was humble. So humble that God gave. Oh, y'all don't really want me to teach his only begotten son. Ah, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Let's go to another scripture. First Corinthians, I dug for you. 
10 and 14. 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. And if you happen to miss a scripture, do you know that you can have the scriptures downloaded to your phone? Yes, you can. This is how you do it. I think it's the same number, isn't it? 72,000. We're going to bring it up on the screen. You can bring it up. Ty's already got it there. Uh, my wife said I called Ty's name so much last week. She said, you said Ty. She said you was happy to have Ty in Israel. And what you? I said, it's always good to have him in the studio. 72,000 TV notes to receive tonight's lesson. And Mark even has some water in here for me. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me tonight? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10 and 14. So, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. You are reasonable people. Decide for yourselves if what I am saying is true. Look at what Paul says. He says, flee from the worship of idols. And that's sometimes what you have to do. You have to pull yourself away. So, indeed... The Old Testament scripture to the Israelites still applies to us believers right now based on the scriptures of the New Testament. We're almost done here tonight, so make sure you share and that you like. In the Old Testament of what we learned last week, God wanted Israel to be honest about their rebellion against him. So he says, and I've got the proof of that, Jeremiah 3 and 12. You might remember. This is what it says. Therefore, go and give this message to Israel. This is what the Lord says. O Israel, my faithless people, come home to me again, for I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. He, uh, then ver verse 13. Only acknowledge your guilt. This is key. Only acknowledge your guilt. Admit that you have rebelled against the Lord, your God, and committed adultery against him. That means wor by worshiping other uh, gods, by worshiping idols under every green tree. Confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. I, the Lord, have spoken. How disrespectful. You're going to worship another God under the green tree from the God that gave you the green tree. Oh, Lord, let me help somebody because that's what we do sometimes. From, we, uh, we worship the things God gives us. We worship the things and not worship the God. We worship the things. How disrespectful. You sit up under a green tree that if I take you back to Genesis, the green tree came from God. So you worship the thing and not the God who gave it to you. We're still doing that in 2021. Putting things before God and the things came from God. Come on and bless his name right there. Because I know there's somebody out there right now. You recognize that everything you have came from God. Everything we have comes from God. If you really get this teaching, it'll help you deal with your life when you lose some things. I don't know why I pause right there, but I'm believing right now that the Lord gave a prophetical pause right there. For somebody who has lost some things, don't worry about that. Go back and praise the same God and worship the same God who gave it to you in the first place. Come on, Israel. Go back. Somebody, your heart was broken because of something you lost. Something is going on with your money and you, oh, Lord, I, I don't, uh-uh, uh-uh. Worship the God that gave it to you. And then there's another person watching tonight. Somebody who God has been so good to in so many ways. Make sure you are not testifying simply about things. Tell the world about the God who gave them to you. Oh, come on. Come on. I'm trying to teach tonight. Uh, again, some by worshiping idols under every green tree. Um, and then it says, confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. Uh-oh. Old Testament said, acknowledge what you have done. Knowledge is acknowledge sin. Acknowledge sin. So 
let's see, where am I? I'm still in, I'm still in Jeremiah, right? Let's look at the New Testament. Does God still want those who sin to be honest about our rebellion? That's the, that's the question. Does he want us to be honest about our sins? All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter number three, verse number five. Matthew chapter number three, verse number five. New Living Translation. People from Jerusalem and from all Judea and all of the Jordan Valley went to, out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he, John, I put that in, baptized them in the Jordan River. When they confessed, so there must have been still in the New Testament a, a requirement or a desire at least, and we'll see if it's a requirement, that there was a confession of sin. The confession of sin is one of the most humble things you can do in your life, is not to lie that you never, have never sinned and that you don't have any sin in your life. I got word on it. Come on, let's go to 1 John 1 and 8. I'm running out of time quickly. 1 John 1 and 8. Oh, uh, and the next one comes up. If we claim we have no sin, we are only, you know who you're fooling? You're not fooling anybody else. Fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. Now, let's flip that around. To live in the truth, then, if I flip it, oh, boy, I just messed it up again. Move me back. Uh, to live in the truth, then we have to be honest, not fool, not try to fool anybody else. If you're going to live in the truth. The truth is that you were created in this human body with a human mind. You were created mortal. The truth is, your great, 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 all the way back down to Adam, sin. And that sin has been passed down. But there's a gift of God that can wipe it away. But if you're going to live in the truth, Stop trying to fool folks. If you're going to live in the truth, you, you have to be honest. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. This is why you have to confess. This is why he request, required Israel to acknowledge their sin. And now in the New Testament, the same thing. And just to, just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. Oh, Wanda Green, Malika Bozeman, Bernitha Washington, Praying Great Mama on here, Michelle Brown. It's in the book. I didn't make this up. It's in the book. Old Testament. So is the Old Testament able to apply? Let's go to one more. Matthew 4 and 17. From then on, Jesus began to preach. Repent of your... Jesus. Jesus began to preach, repent of your sins, turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, we, we have to understand this word repent. And I'm taking this word from the Greek word repent, and I found the definition, and it means this. When you say to repent, to think differently or afterwards, i.e. reconsider morally feel compunction, compunction, morally feel compunction. What is compunction? Compunction is a feeling of guilt or moral scruples. You ever heard anybody say you lost your scruple? That prevents or follow the doing of something bad. 
Repent is not just talking about, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. Go back to repent, Mark. Go back to repent. Repent, can you go backwards? There you go. Is to think, because some people go backwards. Oh, to see, I always, I always got a word. See, it's your choice whether you click to the front or you click to the back. Come on here. Come on here. Repent to think differently or afterwards can re reconsider. And then it gives you this word, compunction. The word compunction, again, I've got, I just want this to be in your head. A feeling of guilt or moral scruple that prevents or follows the different, follows the, diff the doing of something bad. Now, we see it is there in the New Testament that there is still from those scriptures I read to you. Now, uh, finally, closing out tonight, remember the scripture that we were studying. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Here's the question, because the Old Testament God's plan was for the exiled. The New Testament that we're answering in the next one minute, does God still have plans for the believer? Give me two minutes. Does God still have plans for the New Testament believers? Are you all starting to understand that when you read the Old Testament, you need some type of New Testament to be able to say, but God is still doing, so you can, let me not jump ahead of my two minutes. Does God still have plans for believers? I dug for you. This is what I found. Ephesians chapter number two, verse number 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew, that's for believers, in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Now, let me bring some clarity to this. This is not simply about what profession you choose uh, or that God has created you for. It is what you do, not what is your title. Because what God does and the plans for believers are to bring glory to God. So that whether you are a plumber and that's what God, that's, that's, your, that's your vocation, what is your anointing? What, what does God want you to do when you're working on other people's faucets? How does he want you to act? So Sunday, God comes to church. And he approaches the podium while I'm preaching, which is not odd at True Bethel, trust me. It's a lot of movement going on. But I told this story on David Bellavia's uh, radio show the other day. Um, he walks up to the podium and he stands staring at me with a hat on. Just standing there, staring. Like, I don't know, six feet away, so you're social distance. But he did not move. I didn't know where the guy came from. He stood throughout the half of the service. He was not a threat. He didn't, we didn't feel, I didn't feel he was a threat. He wasn't aggressive. He was just staring. We later found out that some members of True Bethel were out to eat. They did get into a conversation with this guy. And whatever they were telling him, they were relating it back to God and the struggles that he was going through in his life. He asked the people what church they went to, and this was a, a Caucasian gentleman, and they told him. And they told him he would be welcome to come to church. They didn't know him. He walks away. They said all they knew is when the bill came, he had already taken the bill and paid it. But where did he end up? In church on Sunday morning. Because that's the plans God has for us. It is to bring him glory in wherever we are. The Christian should be the best customer at the restaurant. The, the Christian, the believer, 
should be the one that whoever's putting your tire on a car, if they got a problem, they know they can, that for some reason, they'll be, be able to talk to you. The Christian is the one that, and I don't say everybody who's on the street asking for money, you ought to give it to them. But God, you ought to pray. God, should I be helping this person? Do you want me to? Those are the things, these are the plans he has for your life. So you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a plumber, you could be a bus driver, school teacher, or unemployed. <laughs> That's my phone, and I'm, I, I am so, I, I cannot believe. I should tell y'all who it is. It's a friend of mine who should know I'm on the air. <laughs> I think I'm a little more animated tonight because this guy, Bellavia, on his radio show, uh, says the other day how much he watches YouTube. Uh, True Bethel, and he talked about the humor that we always have on Sunday morning and, and how we're able to interlace that. Because some people have been just miserable teaching the Bible. You, you just feel like you're just on your way to hell. Can I say hell? Oh, okay, it won't, they won't beat me out or nothing. Okay, got to finish up my work. So to do the things he has planned for us. Let's go to two more scriptures and we're out of here. We're out of here. Ephesians 1 and 11. Ephesians 1 and and 11. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to whose plan, folks? His plan. Come on, you, this is a test. This is a test. Whose plan does it say is going to work out? It says, work out according to his plan. Oh, come on. So, so let's do one more. Let's do one more. Because it, so what, what we just learned, two places, and there are others, where it talks about God's plan. Romans 12 and 2. Whew. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So, you know how usually I say, is that what the Bible meant or not? Let's go back to what we were studying. Jeremiah, for I know the plans, so at least me, at least me, here's that God had plans for the Israelites, and when I read in my Bible, it says he has plans for us. New Testament, I'm a New Testament believer. He has plans for us, says the Lord. They are plans for good. Now, what does the plans to the Israelites say? He said, if the Israelites, no, did I go back? I'm sorry. And not for disaster. This is the Jeremiah. But what Jeremiah says, look, he says, they're good, not for disaster. And what did the New Testament say? He had these plans long ago. He makes it work out. He says, then, let's look at Romans 12 and 2 again, Mark. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. Is that what the Bible meant or not? In this instance, in Jeremiah, I can find proof in the New Testament that when we talk about he knows the plans, that he's still making plans for believers' lives. Aren't you glad? <laughs> I'm glad because I preached that enough. And I wanted to make sure you know, because I needed to, how to lay scripture upon scripture and see if it's still applicable after Christ rose. Is it still applicable after Christ rose? So next week, I'm going to deal with the scripture about that generations to generations. And if you didn't believe, it goes from generation to generation, because that's Old Testament. But my friend tonight, God still has made a plan for us. And you really don't have to figure it out if you have a relationship with him. Orange trees do not have to figure out how to become orange trees. 
Apple trees do not have to figure out how to become apple trees. They were simply created to do it. And if they stay planted, come on, let me preach. I'm trying not to preach. If they stay planted in the ground long enough, hear me, because some people want to grow up, but they never grew down. Roots do not grow down first. If a root grows down, up grows up first, I'm sorry, if a root grows up first, it will not grow. It has to grow down in the ground. And when the root grows down in the ground, then comes up what is to be produced. I encourage you, let humble yourself enough to grow and be solid. Some people claim they hear, uh, uh, I get a call from the Lord and they want to become an apostle in two days. You ain't grown down. That's why you got to be careful who you promote. That's why you got to be careful of what you let people do because some people think, oh, I got this car. Oh, this is what God, and they got a zeal, but they don't have any knowledge because they haven't grown down. You know when somebody grows down because every wind of doctrine will not move them. You know when they've grown down because when trouble comes, they're not the first to fall over or fall out. They will stand there the same way. They'll stand there. You know when they haven't grown down, when God has blessed them and they have plenty and they're sitting there waving their leaves. And then when God takes something away, they wither and they die. You have to grow down so that God can water you and bring you up and you will know this is why I'm here. It is not about the physical job. That's the flesh. It is about your spirit, man, and doing that which God calls you to do. And so it's not just one time. You, they, they, I, I don't know of anybody who goes, who has plans to go from here to Georgia, and there's no stops along the way. There's going to be some stops. It's going to be some starts. There's going to be some interactions. But just know in every interaction, you are called to be the light in darkness. If you don't know the Lord today, today is a good day. It's a good day to have a relationship with a good God. And all you have to do is ask him to come into your life, to save you, forgive you. Let let him know, I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe he died. I believe he rose again for me. And you right there in your house, in your car, on your phone, on the conference call, on YouTube, on Facebook, on the church website, you can do that right now by just asking them, come in my life, change me, make me new like I just learned, because now I do know that you have plans for me. And for those of you who are already saved, those of you who know God and the pardon of your sins, know that he's still working on you. Just follow the plans that he has for you. They're for good. And I promise you, we serve a good God. You're always welcome to become a part of the True Bethel family. Your phone, social media, or on a Sunday morning. Come on by the church if you've already registered. Come by, worship with us, and become a part of the True Bethel Baptist Church family. I love you so much with the love of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight. Thank you for what you told the children of Israel in Jeremiah. And thank you for what you told us from Matthew to Revelation. Father, we thank you for a deeper study of your word so that we can understand you more. Thank you for the plans that you have for us. Plans that are being enacted right now in our lives. If we believe you and trust you. Thank you that when you brought us into this world, You brought us here with a purpose. Everyone, God, listening, everyone watching, no matter how tough life can get, has a purpose. And we thank you for the purpose you have given to everyone alive and who you are carrying it out in the lives of the believers. We confess, oh God, our sins to you that we have not been the greatest thing. We made some bad choices and had some bad actions in our life. Thank you for being such a loving God that you didn't abandon us, 
You didn't throw us away. But that verge, that patience that comes from you, that patience we want to learn in ourselves was there as you waited for us and as you brought us closer to you. I thank you for that person who is asking you into their life right now. May their life never be the same. For it is in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Listen, my friend, I'll see you real soon. I am thankful today that you tuned in. It's another day called Friday. You can catch us on the uh, channel of Facebook of uh, Power to the People radio show and on YouTube. We're on, and on YouTube tomorrow, Friday at noon. We've got a lot to talk about. And then Sunday morning, Sunday morning, we'll be together again on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern. Come on in the room, virtual church. Come on in the room, those of you who are registered. Until next week, we say peace.